Hey guys, Kristen here. Today I want to talk about how to say no to things that you actually want to do. All right, so you know, by now we've already addressed the fact that in order to heal and recover, we need to avoid the push crash cycle. This can conflict sometimes though with the things we really want to do in our lives. Like sometimes there's a big party we want to go to, sometimes there's a big work event, um, whatever's happening in your life, sometimes we can really, really want to go do something. But we also know that doing that thing is going to be too much and it's going to cause a crash that we'll have to recover from. And since crashes <laughs> prevent recovery and get in the way of recovery and can actually make our health issues worse, we're conflicted between, you know, what feels like a rock and a hard place. It's either I'm going to miss out on this great thing in life or I'm going to spend like hours or days recovering from doing that great thing. Like there's no good choice to make. All right. So what's going to happen is you're going to go through um, the exercise we've done in the past on how to determine if something is worth the push crash cycle or not. Okay. And if you go through that and it is worth the, the crash, then go for it, do it. Okay. And uh, just to recap that real quickly, basically we go in and sit with our desire to push. We ask ourselves why we want to push. And we uncover underlying reasons okay and then we can ask ourselves is that underlying reason is that really worth the crash sometimes the answer is yes usually it's no so when the answer is no that this event is not worth the crash that's going to follow as much as i want to do it it's not worth the consequences how do you say no so first you got to say no to yourself first you got to have this conversation with yourself saying man i really want to go to Jenna's birthday party in a couple weeks. I really want to see Jenna. I haven't seen her in forever. I can't wait to see all of our friends that are there. I know it's going to be a blast. All right. Acknowledge, acknowledge that desire and why you want to go. Feel that it's real. It's part of acceptance and presence. And also acknowledge the consequences. Say, but I know if I go, I'm going to overdo it. I'm going to be talking to everybody. I'm going to be out and about. I'm going to be walking around. I'm going to be eating and drinking things I know that I shouldn't be. And I know that if I go to this party, I'm probably going to spend a couple extra days in bed this weekend, just trying to get myself to a place where I can walk into work on Monday morning. And that's not what I want to do with my weekend. <clears throat> I would rather spend the weekend recovering from where I am today instead of recovering from a crash. Basically, I'd rather be here Saturday morning when I wake up improving from there as opposed to down here Saturday morning recovering from my crash just to try to get back to here Monday morning. All right. <clears throat> it's definitely a choice I've had to make in the past. And that is how I frame it of I'd rather be here as opposed to here. So once you've made that decision and you've had that conversation with yourself and you know why you're not going to go, then you've got to communicate that to the other person. And this is always, this is always tricky because it always comes down to the person you're talking to and where you're coming from when you convey things. <clears throat> so I found the, you know, the thing that produces the best results when you're reporting disappointing news is to say to the person like, Hey, I really wanted to go to this. And then you state the reasons that it's special to that person. You say, I really want to go to this because it's your birthday. And because I know we haven't seen each other in a while. And I know you've been missing me. All right. Really talk about things from the other person's point of view. It shows that you're not just thinking about yourself and being selfish. It shows that you're actually thinking about them and caring about them and understanding them where they're coming from. And people usually really appreciate that. <clears throat> and then also tell them why. Tell them like, look, I'm going through these health issues and I know, and I know no one else really understands it, but I just don't have the energy to be able to do this. I won't be able to get out of bed on Saturday if I go to your party. And, and I know that seems crazy. And yeah, it really sucks, but it's where I'm at. So, um, and then close out whatever you're telling them with just a real nice little simple, like, I miss you. I love you. Some sort of nice little warm connecting phrase and leave it at that. <clears throat> so that can be done via email, via a text message or over the phone. How you communicate that really depends on the closeness of your relationship. If this is someone that you are really close to or used to be really close to, I would definitely do it over a phone call if possible. 
Um, and then, you know, for someone who's more of an acquaintance, like an email or text message is, is totally fine. So to recap that, how to, how to say no to an event you really want to go to is first <clears throat> apologize for not being able to go and explain the situation from their point of view. Why would they be disappointed that you're not able to go? And why is this event special to that other person? Show that you empathize with them and understand their, their point of view. And then explain your situation, explain why you can't go and acknowledge that it's weird and misunderstood, but just be very firm on, but this is what I need to do for myself. And then close out with something really nice and touching and connecting to the other person. So big topic, um, very emotional. You know, if you found other ways to turn down events that you really want to go to, or if you have other difficulties, like with family, these things can be a lot trickier to maneuver. Um, I'd love to hear your questions about this or your experiences with actually tackling this. And then also the emotions that you go through when you're, when you're actually delivering the bad news or the, maybe some pushback that you get. Let's start a dialogue around this so that we can help each other see more possibilities and how to move forward through these tough moments. All right. Thank you so much. Leave your comments down below. Uh, if you found this useful and you want to keep getting more tips from me on how to live with severe chronic fatigue, then subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm Kristen and I'll see you later.